we are going to go through my daily routine kind of show you here we have muck boots kept on the front porch so first things first get the muck boots on And if you listen real carefully, in a minute, you're going to hear the goat start going crazy. Kind of cold out today. It's been a pretty mild winter. Normally they go crazy. They're not. Oh, there we go. I thought something changed. So uh, I don't have the goat barn finished yet, which is where I would normally keep my feed. And that's fine because it allows me to check on the rabbits fairly easily. Show you the rabbits. This is my male silver fox. There's a female back there. She's pretty bashful. I keep my food in a tote. I've been doing this and I'm kind of surprised these have lasted so long. They've, I've been using this tote method for quite a while. Basically I just use a tote with a little plastic bowl in there. They're calling for some rain tomorrow, so I don't fill the feeders up all the way. I feed them about half full. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. The reason why I don't fill them up all the way I did not extend my roof out far enough to keep the rain from landing on this so what happens is is the water hits this lid which isn't at a sufficient enough level for it to roll off but water gets down in here and it soaks into the food and eventually your food gets wet and it's on my to-do list to fix it one of these days I just haven't gotten around to it Rabbit poop. This year's rabbit poop. So I keep the goat feed and alfalfa in my building. I've been buying compressed alfalfa and I'm gonna have to set this camera down. There's a bag of feed there from tractor supply and I use an empty great value creamer thing to put the food in and I use a small thing of Folgers to scoop it out of the bag I have not been able to find a source yet of square bales of, of a hay and since I got these like goats I don't remember when it was now October September October so I've been buying this compressed stuff from tractor supply and they like it pretty well, but they go through stages where they'll eat hardly none. And then all of a sudden they eat a bunch. And ever since the female kitted, 
they've actually been eating more alfalfa I am probably about to get alfalfa dust all over the camera lens it's pretty dusty stuff there's a lot of fines in it they mostly eat the uh, hay out of it which is fine but this is compressed and you can't just give it to them like they, they just won't eat it so I have to like break it up and then they'll eat it I think a bale of this has been lasting me. It's a, I think it's a 40 or 50 pound compressed bale. It's been lasting me about two weeks, I think. They really like the greens, and I get it from Royal King. I. <coughs> I've actually been trying to buy like all of my feed for the chicken, the rabbits, and goats from Royal King. And then I get this alfalfa from Tractor Supply simply because they kind of, they, they package it up in this plastic and Royal King doesn't. It's the same brand, Stan Lee. But they don't wrap it in the plastic, and I just really like the plastic. It kind of keeps, you know, moisture in the air. It helps with it. Also keeps, you know, rodents from getting out of it or from getting into it. And this is the bottom, which means it's kind of being funky. Usually it comes out in like slabs that's pretty easy to break up. But I guess because it's where it's the bottom, it's coming out in just little small bits and pieces. I don't know if you can still hear the goats or not. They basically know that it's time to eat. When it's cold like this, Of course, they're, they're back where they can browse. If they get hungry, like if they run out of alfalfa or they run out of feed, they can go back into the woods, which is actually where they was at just about an hour ago. I seen them back there. They go back in the woods and browse. And little bit, which is the baby, she's only about, I guess she's about two weeks old now. Mama's been teaching her and almost from day one, little bit has been chewing on hay and straw. So mama takes her back into the woods and like shows her like, oh, you can eat this bark or you can eat these leaves. It's, it's, it's quite funny. She's actually been a really good mother.
So I know that my goats, and they never have from day one, you know, you'll read online and it'll say, oh, a goat will eat three pounds of hay per day per goat. That's just not, not the case with mine. Like I said, this 50 pound compressed bale lasts me about two weeks. Pretty consistently with too many alpines and a Nigerian dwarf goat that's what it lasts me I feel basically fill up this planter I think it's a 27 quart planter and I'm gonna have to have the lid because normally I would carry this in one hand and the planter in the other but now I've got the camera so I'm having to change the way I do things so that you guys can see and hope and pray I can lift this with one hand and it not just fall out everywhere it's a little top heavy I'm gonna try it it's actually a lot top heavy Show you what I've got going on here. So there's that. And when I pick it up, because of the weight of the alfalfa, it wants to basically all dump out. And now you can see the goats. They are like, oh, it's food time. What are you guys doing down here making such a ruckus it's pretty muddy I just about fell and killed myself so you can see they will start to go over collecting by where I feed them at. Little bits back there. I usually look in the food container to try to tell. I don't really, actually I do see some poop in there. So if there's any poop, you got they won't eat it. I don't see any more. I have no idea what you guys can see. So there they go. Now to get the hay. alfalfa whatever you do always 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 shut gates behind you if you have goats ask me how I know here is a little bit She is only about two weeks old. She's normally really energetic. I don't know why she's being so... You alright girl? Huh? You alright girl? You're going to have to move.
See all this mud? I know you can see, you just can't tell how muddy it is. You can kind of see that a lot of that straw that's in there for bedding, they will drag out. This is pretty soupy mud right now. We've had quite a bit of rain. So usually what I do, check their water. I already checked it this morning. I'll come out and walk this electric fence line and make sure that it is on. Nothing is like up against it or and the goats will eventually run down here and catch up with me. So what I'm looking for is that there are no sticks or limbs or trees that have fallen on the electric fence. I guess I could turn this around so you can see the fence instead of looking at me. I actually need to fix this corner right here eventually. It needs pulled out some. It's getting closer to this tree than what I would like for it to be. They are trained to the electric fence though. So lucky for me, I don't have to do much with it. They stay away from the fence, so unless something falls on it, I'm usually in pretty good shape. And I'm really truly surprised they did not run down here. They almost always run out here with me. And they didn't today. The other thing I'm looking for too when I'm out here on this fence is to make sure I don't have any place where like an animal has tried to jump the fence and knocked it down. I have had that happen once or twice. More than likely it was deer. What? What'd you come running down here all excited for? And she will walk right in front of me within like two steps. And I actually will have a hard time walking because she wants to be all wrapped up in my legs. Would you go? Go, go, go. Go. always within two steps and she'll stop and then I have to like basically run into her to get her to move this hill is actually pretty slick all right so the goats are taken care of little bit what are you doing girl huh what are you doing she's still scared of me come on come on <laughs> she's just too cute Oh, 
And let me spread that around some so you can get in there. She likes to lay on top. I guess she feels protected up there. Did you make it? Huh? Did you make it? Now what are you chewing all my fingers for? Guess I'll give you some attention so you will stop Cry baby, big cry baby. And mom is over here slurping up water out of the straw. You doing all right, girl? Hmm. Now you see why I don't do this. This is too hard to do one handed. All right. Now we got the chickens. They are probably in good shape. They got plenty of water. They got plenty of food. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rhode Island Red, a rooster. All right. Seven hens, Rhode Island Red, and rooster. Head count's good. Now to check for eggs. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, two. Uh. So the uh, the darker chickens, the darker chickens are really only about uh, October, November, December, January. They're only about four four months old, maybe five. I don't remember now. I have to look it up. Anyways, only one of them has started laying, and she just started laying yesterday. That is the lighter color egg. The, the darker brown is from the Rhode Island Red that's coming out of the coop right now. She was looking to make sure I collected her egg. All right. Yeah, of course, the rooster letting everybody know I'm leaving. They're all up there like, hey. Oh well. This video raw is up to like 30 minutes now, so let me get this put up. The eggs taken inside. 
and then we got another little bit of video I'm going to do so the bees don't need anything yet it's not warm enough for them to be out even though it's been like you know a mild winter they don't get out too much I stuck those eggs in my jacket pocket and I'm <laughs> trying to not bend over and squash them so that's my day task with the animals I do it twice a day by the way in the winter time in the summertime it's only about once a day twice a day in the winter time because water freezes up and you got to check the water and make sure they got water so I do a water run in the morning and then right now it's about 5 p.m. So uh, I do a food and water run in the evening.